the rack. Come on. Stay tight. Uh, hello again, I'm Sam. Uh, today we're going to go over how to front squat as well as uh, improving mobility so that you can front squat properly. Uh, and we'll have Arlo be our uh, dummy, I guess. <laughs> Uh, model, I should say, for uh, some of the mobility exercises, and then we'll go to the bar. Alright, so one of the first limiting factors is going to be thoracic mobility. So that is uh, mobility within the uh, mid-back, because uh, that will affect how he can bring his arms up. So one thing we want to start with is a lacrosse ball, and we'll put this underneath the shoulder blade here, just right on the inside, and have him lay back on it. <laughs> Feels fantastic. Feels great. Um, you can do a couple of things. I like to have them go thumb to opposite pocket and then open out. Open out yep, this way. Just like that. Do that for four or five reps uh, in each location of the ball. Feels fantastic. <laughs> And then once you've done it around four or five times, you can move the ball just an inch up and you can feel it yourself onto a new spot. And then do it again. And we'll do that all the way around, starting at the base, going up to the top, and then you do it on the other side as well. Next, we can introduce a uh, double ball, two balls taped together, and have them just put that, center that. And then you can try and practice going into a front rack position, <laughs> doing that. <laughs> My front rack is terrible. <laughs> and then you can have a partner come in and help stretch it a little bit. This will kind of give you the feeling of uh, being in that front rack position while being still straight up and down vertical because you can't compensate too much. Okay, Let me get that out of there. Uh, next, we can work on some tricep stretches. So for that, this is a partner stretch. Just bring the arm here, comes underneath. And you want to, you can see the shoulder blade will start to wing out a little bit here. So just kind of keeping that, pulling this here. He's got some pretty flexible triceps, so it's not too bad. Do you feel it stretched down the side here at all? Yeah, down, down here further. Right. That's starting to get the tricep too. Good tricep stretch. Yeah, we'll keep it even. <laughs> okay. So we got that. Now we'll do some more standing up. So we'll have to reposition. All right, uh, another limiting factor is going to be the flexibility of your uh, forearm flexors. Uh, you're trying to bring your wrist back, uh, so if these are too tight, it's going to keep you more like this. So getting these stretched, you can come up to a bench, do some of this. Um, if you want to do a more aggressive stretch and you have some voodoo floss mobility band here, Just wrap it around. How tight should they wrap it, Sam? Um, it depends. Your first time, you don't want it to be cutting off circulation. You don't want to be making yourself numb. I'm not doing it too tight. Uh, just enough to get a little compression on the muscles here. If you have hairy arms, uh, this can rip some of the hairs if you go too tight. Or <laughs> so, you just have to be ready for that. 
Um, and then you're just doing the same stretch again, but this will have an added bonus of compressing some of the muscles. Uh, may or may not help stretch fascia. <laughs> not sure. So you can do that and you can get the other side too. And don't leave it on too long. <laughs> like a minute or two, do you think? Or how long would you leave it on? Um, maybe a minute each side. minute each side. Yeah, Great. do some stretching. You can also have this and go up to a bar while you have this on uh -huh. to kind of stretch too. Uh, and then next, um, stretching, I guess it would be rotator cuff, uh, holding onto a golf club. Like this. You could even come up to here, set it in here, so you can practice <clears throat> keeping yourself squared and not, you know, leaning any which way to avoid the stretch. Do that on each side. Your instinct is to kind of lean back a little bit and avoid it, but trying to stand straight here. Uh, and then next, probably the final stretch, uh, taking a resistance band, just stepping on it right at the heel, putting the hand in it. I like to get it right in the middle of the hand if you can, uh, so it stretches the wrist more than just the fingers. You're just bringing it out. Same thing, keeping straight vertical, trying to keep the elbow up and out, not letting it down here or like this. Just straight there. Uh, and the trick is finding a resistance that is good for a stretch, but not, you know, so painful that you're just, you know, getting crushed under it. <laughs> <laughs> and it might be different for each side. Like this, on this side, will definitely be worse for me um, since I've had surgery on this wrist. Yep. <laughs> And now we can come into the bar. <clears throat> um, front squat hand position is just based on your flexibility and what's comfortable for you. Uh, some people can be all the way out here, but that's pretty uncommon. Uh, usually you're more close in, inside the little uh, ring here on the knurling. And you want to be able to just comfortably have it sitting right across the top of the shoulders here. So just right on the front of your deltoids here, just resting there. You don't want it to be down too far because then you have to, you know, it'll pull you forward. You don't want to be too far back because then it will cut off circulation um, and you'll pass out. <laughs> um, if you cannot hold the bar like this, um, we have different modifications. A lot of people know you know, the zombie squat, like holding like this, but I prefer to use some straps instead. We'll take these, wrap them around, and you get them pretty similar to where you would normally grab the bar. Then you come in. And then you can just hold it here. And I like this better uh, because one, it limits the amount of weight you can do because you are supporting it with your arms a little bit more. Uh, and two, this is more transferable to a normal front squat than doing this because uh, this is just different shoulder motion. So once you, oh, hold on. <laughs> Once you have that, it's just like a normal squat. Your feet are about shoulder width apart, toes slightly outward. Um, just keeping as vertical as you can. Just sitting down. And right back up. Can you show that again? I kind of. Yeah. Let me, let me take these off. <laughs> it's actually harder for me to do that now. <laughs>
And the whole time you're thinking about keeping your elbows up as much as you can. The tendency is to kind of come forward and let it drop. That's going to put tremendous strain on the spine. Um, so just keeping it as vertical as possible. And it's actually a little bit easier on the knees than the back squat if you are straight up and down. Um, although it is a little bit easier to fall forward. Um, that's why it's always good to have your racks here. So if you do have to ditch it, you can just kind of push it away. <laughs>